Hello everyone, if you are watching this video, it means you enjoyed our very first episode, which by the way, you can find here. Today, I'm with Tomasz, again with Tomasz, with whom we prepared a bunch of good news. So, fasten your seatbelt, check our cool new brand intro, and stay tuned. Welcome in another round of hot news. Please remember to subscribe to our channel to be up to date and dive into the front end depths with us. For the current session, I have prepared five topics. The first one is about ES 2021 release. Second one is gonna be about TypeScript 4.2 beta. Next thing is about DevTools for Chrome 89. Another one is gonna be about Node.js and npm build. And the last thing is about upcoming frontend conferences. So does it make sense, Chris? Shall I start? It does, Tomasz. Video is ready? Mike's ready? I'm ready? I'm ready too. Mike is yours? And let's get started. So first one was about incoming AS 2021 release. What's in? Yes, uh, I'm happy to announce that we can expect the release of new ES 2021 and inside we should see a plenty of different updates, fixes, but uh, I would like to tell you about three things that I found most important. Go ahead. So the first one is about logical assignment operators uh, that will combine the logical operators and assignment expressions. So this will be really useful because it will make our code uh, shorter and easier to maintain. Second thing is about new any method in promises API. This method will expect an array of promises as an argument and will return the promise that will be fulfilled as soon as the very first promise from, uh, from this table, from, from the argument array will be resolved. Okay, is it going to work with rejections too? Yes, uh, that's correct. The same mechanism will work also for rejected promises. Um, another thing, using big numbers in JavaScript is really painful, right, Chris? It is. In the upcoming release, we have a new readable format for the binary, hexadecimals and big in, so it's worth to check. Okay, worth to check. but. What if I want to play with the new updates? Yeah. Is there any possibility? Yes, we can play with um, these features in, for example, DevTools. So uh, it's worth to check it on your own and play with it. Okay, cool. And the last one, guys, because it sounds interesting. So if you want to check the full list of new proposal, you can find it under this URL. Go ahead, check yourself. Okay. Probably that's it from this news. So the next one is about TypeScript 4.2 beta. Yeah, week ago we were celebrating the beta release for the TypeScript. New version includes plenty of features and um, small fixes updates around the currently existing one. What are the features? What are the fixes, Tomasz? Okay, so um, last release of TypeScript allow us to use the rest element um, inside tuple. Um, but the restriction was we could use the rest elements only as the very last argument in, in the tuple array, okay? So um, in the new release of TypeScript, that has changed because we are, an, we are unable to um, use the rest element in the very first or in the middle of the tuple array. Um, the only restriction we still need to remember is that the rest elements cannot be uh, followed by any other optional arguments or um, rest element too. Okay, do you really use tuples in your projects? Yes, and we are using them quite often. Uh, for example, when we are using the React use state hook, we receive the tuple. Next thing is uh, smarter type alias preservation that keeps tracks of how types were constructed before the TypeScript already will normalize them. Um, abstract construct signatures is going to be handy when we are dealing with an abstract classes. Um, 
what's more, template literal expression have template literal types and this is the answer on the inconsistency between template string types and template string expression from the previous TypeScript release. Um, last thing worth to mention is about update touch for generators. Uh, so when a yield expression is captured but it isn't typed, um, the TypeScript will now throw an error, it will be implicitly any error. Um, so yeah, that's that's the things that uh, were worth to mention, but obviously if you want to know all of the updates, um, you should check the link that we will also uh, have in the description. And here. Yep. Cool. Guys, DevTools for Chrome 89. I don't have to introduce the DevTools. I think um, every web developer already know that tool. So we have some updates and bug fixes for the new version of the DevTools. Um, so yeah, what we can find inside we can find breakpoints on trusted types violations. Um, we can capture node screenshot on um, on the viewport that is you know behind that is not being uh, visible. Um, we have trust tokens tab for network requests. We've got Lighthouse Seven in the house. I see you smiling. Uh -huh. Why? Uh -huh. uh, you know I like that tool. I'm using it often. Uh, in almost every project to you know measure performance uh, or just to validate if everything's fine with the web app yeah i mean it's very interesting update uh we use lighthouse like very uh, like every project mm -hmm. uh today so um yeah, really looking forward for this one that's correct uh what what's more uh some updates around cookies debugging and css flexbox debugging tools so now is we'll... cookies uh debugging tricky for you uh, it depends on the case, but yeah, sometimes it causes an error, sometimes uh, some things are not readable uh, as much as I would like to, to, to have it. So um, these tools have been improved in terms of uh, a lot of things like, you know, readability, uh, performance, or uh, we can even debug more and take more from the cookies. Okay, guys, and that's it from the dev tools. Let's move forward. So, Chris, what's the next topic? But before that, I was about to ask you which one is your favorite. I think it. you already answered. It's like Lighthouse 7. Um, but maybe you have another one. Yeah, mainly I, I, I like all the, of the dev tools, but Lighthouse is one of my favorites. That's correct. Um, I'm wondering what's your favorite feature from the DevTools and we are looking forward for your answers in the comment section above this video. Okay guys, so the next one is Node.js 15.6 and NPM 7.4.2 which arrives recently. A lot of points, 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 but yeah, this is how we deal with uh, the release numbers and versions. Um, yeah. Thanks for mentioning that. Um, Node.js and NPM got new releases, which um, fix some smaller things, fix some bigger things, put some uh, new features. Node.js team decided to go full on and they put a lot of updates in almost all of the fields from the Node.js um, library. So it means they touch, uh, they did touch child processes, um, crypto library, documentation, HTTP protocol, um, net processes and V8 engine. So it means that almost everything has been somehow improved. Touched. Is there any place we can find full list of the release? Um, yes, as always, everything is being put into the uh, release notes, so you can check on your own on the Node.js site. Cool. Thank you, Tomasz. So the last one was about front-end world conferences, and I pretty imagine that today is quite tricky to like attend any conference because of yeah hard times of COVID-19. So. What's the new version of those conferences? Yeah, uh, I was waiting for this topic. I really miss those days when we travel to another country to join a conference to meet us some people. Um, nowadays, as you mentioned, it's tricky because we have COVID-19 and uh, it's not easy to leave your country and attend to any of the conference as they are not being organized. But what is good, it's not like there are no more conferences at all because everything has moved into the internet, so we can attend to the event online. Do you remember Berlin? 
Oh, Berlin. Yeah. I don't remember. No, no, no. Just kidding. Of course, I remember Berlin and it was awesome. I would love to um, go there once again after the COVID-19 situation. Is it for you like the main point of conferences, obviously, apart from the knowledge, uh, was like meeting people and that kind of interaction. Wouldn't we miss this? Yes, uh, I miss real contact with another person. Um, most of the time we are working remotely. And yeah, obviously, uh, we it's not about only uh, focusing on the technology aspect. Conferences were more about creating connections, you know, uh, socializing with uh, all of the attendees, um, making new friends, making new business contacts and be more integrated with the community. Come on, it's important, man. It's important. We cannot only put the code into our idea. We should also speak about what we are doing and speak about technology, share our thoughts. I really miss that, man. Yeah, me too. Okay, guys. So you already know that we hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know that we miss it. And we really do. Um, but okay, we have those online times, so... Yes, and in upcoming months, there will be a lot of tasty conference and events that it, you should think about to put into your calendar. Okay, um, so what are the conferences in upcoming weeks? Um, Node.js Congress, which will take place at February 18th, 19th. Um, we can find over 20 speakers, uh, including Raban Casas from the American Express, which will be speak about the micro front ends revolution at American Express. Micro front ends? Aha, uh -huh. micro front ends? Front ends? <laughs> front trends? Micro front end? Okay, guys. <laughs> so, I have good news for you because with the front end news, we released a new kind of playlist uh, with Expert Zone. And the first episode is gonna be about micro front end. Tomasz will provide a lot of knowledge about this, so I strongly recommend you to stay tuned. Thanks, thanks, Chris. And yeah, um, if you're interested in micro frontends, please take a look and enjoy the frontend experts. The second conference that is worth to check is Vue.js Amsterdam, which will take place uh, from 26th to 28th of February. Over 30 speakers that will take us into the world of the Vue.js ecosystem and share with us um, their thoughts about using Nuxt.js or Vuex or any other tooling that is around Vue.js, man. Okay, the third one. JS World Conference that will take a place from 22nd to 27th of February. And guys, believe me, this is awesome because we can find over 100 talks. 100. 100 talks. That's why it will take five days. And these talks will be from different disciplines, like from the design perspective, UI, UX, uh, from the full stack uh, perspective, JavaScript, front end, DevOps, everything 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 and this is the biggest one do we have time. agenda today um if you want to check the agenda and all of the topics please take a look into the conference website to find the info about the speakers and about what they were talking about and fourth thing is the react summit that will take place at april from 14th to 16th um they say it will be over 40 speakers, but unfortunately we cannot find agenda yet. Still, we have, you know, a few months. Um, but I did put this into my calendar too. Looking forward, Tom. Is there any favorite? Uh, good question. And I will answer it in the next episode. But um, yeah, please put your types in a comment section and try to guess what conference me and Chris will join in the next month. Okay guys, that's it from today's news. It's time for Curated Project, so see you soon. Hey everybody, welcome to the website of the week. Today I'm gonna show you something that you might think won't impress me or I wouldn't appreciate this style, but I totally love this. So peaceful, so calm, it leaves me in this mood for a very long time. Guys, welcome to Ballet Academy. 
At the beginning, when the website is loading, we can notice it's so beige everywhere. But it's getting a little bit darker once we progress. Let's connect our headphones, hold mouse over this website. And there she goes, low poly, shiny 3D model of a dancer, appearing and rotating in front of our eyes. I have to hold it all the time while she's dancing, when I stop she's getting back to previous position. Finally, we are going to an introduction with a very short explanation what is this website about. French Dance Center, quite short one lol. We can keep scrolling and then she appears again from another view. I must say I'm kind of fascinated and charmed by this smoothness. I can't find any unpredictable move, but now, finally, we can read something more about the dance center. Between every section we watch our ballerina dance from different views. And every new part of this website, every section is about something new. So next part is about the artists and the prime dancers. By clicking these nice animated buttons we can read something more about them. Those photos are actually super contrasted, quite opposite to the entire website. I think it's like single light source, but I love those shadows. Next sections are about events and directions. But if you ask me what I miss on this page is some kind of contact or info about the school, where it's located or how it looks like or how to actually reach it. Anyway. I really appreciate this form of presentation of this body school. I would love to inspire you to check yourself and to be honest, that's it for today. See you in the next section, which is Tips and Trips with Tomasz Krajewski. Welcome guys in another round of Tips and Tricks. Today I would like to show you the Compress.js library. Thanks to it, we can optimize our images on the client side and then send them to the backend. As we can see on the example, I have already defined the input field, which will can take the multiple files being uploaded. The important thing is that we need to define the ID, because this ID will be used by us or by the library on the JavaScript side. Remember to import uh, the library and add it to the project. The version is 1.1.2. So let's check how to use the Compress.js library. We need to import the library from node modules. And initialize it. So um, we have our handler, our instance of the compress class. Let's try to read um, our yeah, our images and check how the optimization looks like and how to deal with it. This is um, quite simple because the thing we need to do is to pass the ID and the second argument. This is the configuration. So we can define, for example, the size uh, that defines the upper boundary of our image file size. Let's say we want to have maximum two megabytes. Uh, quality of the compressed file should be, um, let's say, 0.8. So this is uh, our quality and it will decrease the params of the image file. Uh, the compress attach method returns the promise, so we can check how our data looks like after resolving the promise. Let's check it out. Okay, we've got the very simple code and let's check how it works. Okay, we have picked two files and let's check the first one. Okay, um, we have the data as a base 64. Let's scroll at the end. Okay, this is the params I would want to show you, the bridge image file. 
The initial size of that file was 0.45 megabytes, and as we can see, the end size is decreased by the our quality modifier. We can also observe the mm, params around width and height. So uh, obviously we have decreased the size of the images. Um, and here are some interesting values like size reduced in percent, iterations. Um, so as you can see, this is very simple to be used. The basic usage is like one, two, three, ten lines of code, including the console log, and breaks between imports and uh, library usage. So um, I highly recommend to include this library into the projects when we need to deal with the optimization, because um, sometimes we don't want to have a really big quality of the image file, um, instead, we want to send it, let's say, straight to the storage and let storage can have some limitations over the file size. So uh, instead of sending it through our backend, where this logic, similar logic happens, um, we will implement this logic on the client side and send the file straight to, 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 to the storage, which really makes sense. Um, okay, if we can decrease it more, let's use 0.4 and let's check what will happen um, okay so let's use another bridge file and wow it has 71% of smaller size than the initial size of this file which is really impressive as you can see, by adjusting the single parameter, you are able to uh, change a lot of uh, a lot of attributes in in our image. Um, and as you can see, the width and height is the same as in the previous example. Okay, obviously we've got um, more attributes to play with, uh, like max width, max height, resize, and much more. Uh, I highly recommend to take a look into the repository. Uh, the link is in the description. So uh, what we can do with this data, we can, you know, play with it. We can create uh, form data and wrap it into the blob file and send to, um, to, to, to our backend or to our storage. We can do whatever we want. And this is just a few lines of code. And yeah, that, that's it. This is a really simple example, but in my opinion, it's worth to know. And thank you for your attention. See you next time. Guys, that's it for today. Thank you for your attention. If you like the materials, the topics are interesting for you, or you have just a good mood, please remember to click the like button and subscribe our channel to let us serve the best news from the front-end world, especially, especially for, for you. you.